my name is Dr. Juanita Mercer, and thank you for joining me today for Powerful 31 Days to Self-Accountability, where we ask ourselves 31 tough questions in 31 days to make sure that we are using our power for good, and that with every decision we make, we're demonstrating our love for God and others. Today is day 29, and today's tough question is, do I have all the data I need to make an informed decision? Are we all guilty of not having all the information we need, you know, to make the best decision? I know I am, right? And I'm doing a much better job though these days of making sure I take the time to do my research and make an informed decision. And this is certainly a godly principle, right? To make sure that we're informed. Proverbs 18 and 2 says, Fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions. And that's one thing we can't get caught up in doing is just telling people what we think instead of what we know. I often tell my students, especially my graduate and doctoral students, your opinion doesn't matter here. What matters is your research, right? That everything you do is sound and that it's informed. And the same is true for us in everyday life, right? Let's take this scripture into consideration. Proverbs chapter 2, 11. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. Wise choices protect us. And in order to make a wise choice, we need to make an informed decision. So for those of you who don't have a strong research background or, you know, don't necessarily consider yourselves research savvy, here are a few steps that you can take to get the data that you need to make an informed decision. Number one, Google it. We have all this information at our disposal, more than we ever had, especially, you know, as a child, right? Google what? Now it's like you can ask Siri and Alexa, whatever it is that you want, and get maybe not the best answer, but somewhat of an answer, and then take it from there, getting a definition, whatever it is that you need. Number two, poll it, or in other words, conduct a survey. And this is especially important for those of you who might be leaders in organizations or churches, because there's one thing I have learned to be true, and that is people will not tell you the truth but they will tell a stranger the truth they're only going to tell you what you want to hear and that's not what you want to hear you want to know the truth so that you can make an informed decision conduct an anonymous survey and get the feedback that you need number three observe it take the time to go to different environments and go to places where um, a particular tool is being used or um, how a policy is being enforced, and take a look for yourself. Number four, try it. Experience it yourself, right? And that's important. Sometimes you just need a firsthand account of what something is like, right? So you, your coworkers, other leaders, right? You and your family, um, give it a try. Try a sample, get a trial, um, and that way, you can see what it's like before you fully commit to something. Uh, I just heard how that sounded. You know what I'm talking about. Number five, compare and contrast different experiences. Um, this is typical of like focus groups and talking to people through interviews and just getting firsthand accounts and talk to multiple people, not just people who had good experiences, but people who also had bad ones. Compare the circumstances so that you can get a full perspective of the kind of decision that you need to make. Don't waste time and money because you didn't do your research, right? Because you didn't ask the questions, you didn't try it, you didn't observe it, you didn't go. No one has time for that. So make an informed decision, which is a wise choice that will watch over you. That's it for today. Join me tomorrow for day 30. And remember, in everything you do and with everything you have, love God and love people. Goodbye.